My name is Rachel and I helped care for my father Tony who was diagnosed with early onset dementia in 2005 and I think there are a few things you should consider before becoming a carer uh, of somebody with dementia. I was always asked if I had any siblings that helped care for my father and I had a brother, he was 11 years older than me and he was, at the time my dad was diagnosed, in a full-time job. He had a, a young family and realistically he couldn't take on a full-time position as a carer. But he wanted to support my dad and support us in any way he could and he found other ways of doing that. He often took my dad out uh, on a drive or to visit friends or to go to the races, which my dad loved to do. And he used to often host us for dinner, which we enjoyed. And one of the nicest things I think uh, was that he would bring his kids in to visit and that would lift all of our spirits. Another thing that I think people should be aware of um, is the responsibility that um, they take on in their role as a carer. Um, I was very lucky that I was in a flexible job where I was able to work around caring for my father, where I was able to take time if needed um, to be with him. Um, but not everyone is, is fortunate enough to be in that position. So some people who are uh, carers will have to look at their career and if it's possible to continue to work full time and if not, what are the alternatives? And I think there's also other factors that are very important that people need to consider such as their own health because you have to, you have to be healthy if you want to be a carer. Um, they need to consider their own families, how they'll be affected. They need to consider where they're living, if they're in close proximity or if they live far away from the person they're caring for. So these are all very important things I think people need to look at if they want to take on a full-time role. Another thing to consider when you become a carer is how much support you have. Uh, a support network for a carer is absolutely crucial because every carer will require support throughout every stage of dementia. Your, your support network can be anybody. It can be the doctors involved in the person's care. It can be your public health nurse. It can be your neighbors. It can be extended members of the family, friends. In my dad's case, uh, he was very fortunate that he had friends who came and took him for coffee every week. That's just one example of many um, involved in his support network. And that was of huge benefit to myself and my mother because we could rely that every Tuesday someone was there to pick him up and take him off for a little while and it was something he enjoyed and we got a break. So that's an example just of how some people can provide support, not just to the person with dementia but to the carers and that little bit of help goes a long way. I would also like to say to carers that the feelings that come up uh, are really important to look at, especially those that can be quite negative and harmful, like resentment and self-pity. Certainly for me, I found that I had a lot of self-pity and resentment because at a young age I had this really tough role that I never ever could have envisaged for myself and a lot of self-pity that I was, I'd found myself there. And I was stuck there for a very long time and it was so negative and un just unhelpful to me. It just made things a lot worse. So I think there's a huge importance in, in dealing with those rather than being stuck in those, in those negative feelings. I learned that those feelings of self-pity weren't getting me anywhere and that the feelings of resentment were just unproductive and that I needed to flip those feelings because I didn't want to be feeling so negative and I wanted to be a better carer and to feel better about myself and be able to handle myself better. And that led me into counselling. And in counselling, I had a space every week where I could just vent. I could just leave all of the feelings that I felt, all of the thoughts and worries and all of the things that I felt I couldn't say to other people. I could leave them in that space. 
And I always felt I was leaving behind a burden or a little piece of that burden every time uh, I finished a counselling session. And one of the things I was asked by my counsellor was, how good are you at asking for help? And when I thought about it a bit, I realised that I was useless. I was really bad. And there had been all of these offers of, you know, if I can do anything for you, I, you know, if I can help out in any way. And I kept saying, we're fine, we're grand. When I started taking up those offers and actually asking for help and saying, yes, I need, I need you for this. I realised how much it benefited me and I really wish I'd done it sooner. Mm -hmm.